Okay, so before we start with the next section, I want to look at one of the questions you had in your worksheet or form. And I'm interested in hearing from any of you who have been listening to this presentation so far. So that can include anything from how you answer the question to any thoughts you had about this particular question. I mean, for me, I kind of didn't have to think into the other answers. I just kind of automatically knew which one was the wrong one. So, or like what was not true. So I really yeah. didn't think into the other one. I, I kind of liked it because it, it, it addressed like, I don't know, not kind of a stereotype that like, oh, it's bad for teens, but it's fine for adults. And that like you were kind of forced to choose that one because every other one was obviously right. I mean, I thought it was kind of ironic because like they say it's a way to quit smoking and then it has more nicotine than like most cigarettes that you would see. And so it was like really good branding by them, but it's it's kind of strange that it has more nicotine than what you would see in a pack of cigarettes. So the answer to this question was they are healthy for adults. So just because we've been focusing on how e-cigarettes affect young people, that doesn't mean that e-cigarettes are healthy in general. A life that is tobacco or nicotine free is ultimately a life that is better. Okay, so I just wanna give you a heads up. We are moving into science heavy territory. So if you need to pause the video at any time, rewind it, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to be talking about the lungs, the heart, and how these aerosol chemicals affect those different organs of your body. So there have been some studies that have been looking at how someone's health will be affected over time. And this is something that's challenging because it took us a long time to study the long-term health effects of cigarettes. So as you can imagine, some things may not show up in the body right away. So you have to look at them over five years, 10 years, 15 years. And e-cigarettes have only been around for about 15 years. So we don't have all the information we need to draw conclusions about how it affects your health. But what we do know is that the aerosol chemicals can cause inflammation and irritation of the airways. This was something we talked about in the last section with glucan and how it caused inflammation of the airways. But the aerosol, the chemicals, when you breathe them in, can cause this. And over time, what it can do to someone's lungs is even lead to a destruction of air sacs. And these air sacs are really important for delivering oxygen into your body. So this is something that happens to cigarette smokers. It's called emphysema. And we know that because we've studied cigarettes for such a long time. Another thing we know about the aerosol chemicals is that it can weaken the immune response to infection. And I'm going to talk about that in relation to COVID-19 or the novel coronavirus. So remember at the beginning of this presentation when I showed you a graphic looking at the risks of using an e-cigarette that can include cannabis or tobacco during a time like this when we're worried about a COVID-19 or coronavirus infection. What I want to do is show you a quick video that was created illustrating how going smoke or vape free can improve your health and help you fight a potential infection.
if someone were exposed to COVID-19 and they were not using any e-cigarettes, cigarettes, cannabis or tobacco, they would be decreasing their risk of infection and decreasing the severity of infection. So this is something that I want you to be aware of. This is a great time to go smoke free or vape free because you are just helping your lungs fight any potential infection. Let's talk about the heart and what the emerging research is saying. Now, the aerosol is known for impairing blood vessel function. And let me tell you specifically what it does to your blood vessels. Now, what is actually happening because of the aerosol chemicals is that there is a stiffening of the blood vessels. And what that does is actually decreases blood flow throughout the body. So if someone has a decreased blood flow, what will happen is they can increase their risk for blood clotting. And as you can imagine, you're probably not able to deliver as much oxygen as you want to to certain organ, basically disrupting the heart's job and what it does throughout the body when you're breathing in these aerosol chemicals. Now, there are so many different factors that I don't want to get into that affect someone's overall risk for having a heart attack. So we're definitely oversimplifying it here, but this is a great way to just visualize how using e-cigarettes and even cigarettes can affect your risk for having a heart attack. Now, if someone were to use e-cigarettes, what that would do is double their chance of having a heart attack. And if someone were to even use cigarettes while using e-cigarettes, so let's say we add that into the equation, now their risk for heart attack is increased by fivefold. The good news though, is that if someone were to eliminate cigarettes, if someone were to eliminate e-cigarettes, so I'm talking about a life that is tobacco or nicotine free, then what they're doing is they're decreasing their risk immediately. And your body is amazing. It reacts immediately to these changes. Now, what I want to remind you is that we don't know the long-term effects of using e-cigarettes. There are just so many parts to it. If I were to take apart a Juul device, which is what you're seeing on the screen, I have all these question marks written here because I don't know what all these individual parts release and what they're going to do to your body. But you also have to think about how these parts are going to affect your community as well or the environment you live in. So some of these plastic pieces are not good for the environment. They don't break down. Also, nicotine from the actual in the e-juice or e-liquid, if it's left behind in the environment, that's toxic. So here are just a few pictures to illustrate that point of these being left behind. So when we think about how this issue affects young people, this is just another way to look at it. The environmental waste is something we're going to have to combat. And for this current generation, um, you don't want to have to worry about solving waste from cigarettes and e-cigarettes as well. So this is just something for you to think about. And if you're already passionate about this issue and getting involved in making changes, um, this is something you want to bring to the attention of adults who are in the government and who are trying to regulate these products. Now, we know the aerosol chemicals do damage to the lungs and heart and can increase the risk for having a lung or heart disease now and later in life. So if someone were to go smoke or vape free, it would decrease their risk and severity of a coronavirus infection. Now, I just wanna be clear about this point. I'm not saying that smoking or vaping causes a coronavirus infection. I'm just trying to point out how your body is affected from the aerosol and how it can make your body or lungs in particular less prepared for fighting an infection. And the coronavirus is just one example. Now, the risk of having a heart attack goes down immediately after someone stopped using. So if someone's thinking about the benefits of going vape or smoke-free, not only are your lungs going to have a normal immune response and have less inflammation, but the risk for heart attack is going down immediately. So we just wrapped up section, the third section of this presentation. You'll want to give yourself some time to answer questions 11 through 17. What I will do is I will show you the key takeaway slide again, just so you can look at it while you fill everything out. And when you're ready to start the next section, you'll wanna click on the next video.